Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house as we gather together for worship on this second Sunday in Lent. The Latin name is Reminiscere, Rem remember, like we uh, cry out in, in, in the intro, remember the Lord. Uh, today, in our readings, Jesus insults a woman. He rejects her, and he tells her she does not deserve either his kindness or even his attention. He's right, and she knows it. And that's why she will not let it go. She knows that as God's Messiah, he comes in mercy. She clings not to her own worth, but only to the eternal promise of God. We're in the same condition she is. May we share in that same faith. This Thursday evening, we continue with our Lenten midweek services as we uh, explore the Lord's Prayer. Our Vesper service starts at 7 p.m. on Thursday evening. As today is the fourth Sunday of the month, we have a special door offering as you leave for our sister congregation of Gethsemane Lutheran Church in Marion. Of course, you can also contribute to them anytime by writing a special note on your offering envelope for Gethsemane. Uh, please be so kind as to fill up little friendship pads that are found along the center aisle and pass them down the pew so that we can better respond to your needs. Is there anything that was left out of our announcement sheet that needs to be especially brought to your attention? I may not see anything that our order for worship this morning is Divine Service Setting 3, found starting on page 184. But first, we begin with singing together our opening hymn, number 579, The Law of God is Good and Wise. Number 579. Please rise.
Again, our order for worship is Divine Service Setting 3, starting on page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave me the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who have given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will, and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God, and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Our intro for this day, this is found printed inside your bulletin from Psalm 25, and we proclaim our intro responsibly. Remember, O Lord, your tender mercies and your loving kindnesses. For they are from old. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all their troubles. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Do not remember the sins of my youth nor my transgressions. According to your mercy, remember me, for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. And therefore he teaches sinners in the way. For your name's sake, O Lord. Pardon my iniquity for your glorious sake.
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated now as we hear from God's Word. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday of Lent is from the 32nd chapter of Genesis. And Jacob arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons and crossed over the ford of Jabu. He took them, sent them over the brook, and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip. And the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with it. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men, and have prevailed. And Jacob asked, saying, Tell me your name, I pray. And he said, Why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is, is preserved. Just as he crossed over Peniel, the sun rose on him, and he lived on his head. Therefore, to this day, the children of Israel do not eat the muscle that shrank, which is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip and the muscle that shrank. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our graduates from Psalm 25. The troubles of my heart have enlarged. Bring me out of my distresses. Look on my affliction and my pain. And forgive all my sins. Our epistle reading is from the fourth chapter of Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Finally, then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. Each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion and lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. We continue now with sharing our Christian faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed as found on page 100. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Please be seated. We continue now in your bulletins with a brief review from Luther's small catechism from the section on confession. What is confession? Confession has two parts. First, that we confess our sins. And second, that we receive absolution. That is forgiveness from our pastor as from God himself, not doubting, but firmly believing that I and our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. What sins should we confess? Before God, we should plead guilty of all sins, even those we are not aware of, as we do in the Lord's Prayer. But before the pastor, we should confess only those sins which we know and feel in our hearts. Which are these? Consider your place in life according to the Ten Commandments. Are you a father, mother, son, daughter, husband, wife, or worker? Have you been disobedient, unfaithful, or lazy? Have you been hot-tempered, rude, or quarrelsome? Have you hurt someone by your words or deeds? Have you stolen, been negligent, wasted anything, or done any harm? We continue now with singing together hymn number 615, When in the Hour of Deepest Need, number 615.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this second Sunday in Lent is our gospel reading in Matthew chapter 15. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon possessed. The problem in the account of the Canaanite woman is that Jesus seems to be mean to her. He ignores her. Then, in her hearing, he tells the disciples that he wasn't sent to help her. Finally, before relenting when she worships him, he rebukes her and calls her a dog. Now, some commentators have thought that this is because she misappropriated the Jewish title, Son of David. The idea is that not only did she not have the right to use that title as a Gentile, but also that she was distancing herself from him with it. She was coming to him as a Gentile, to the Jewish Messiah, and emphasizing the separation. She was not coming as a repentant heathen or even a convert. She was simply seeking a Jewish miracle worker superstitiously, much in the way that some Jews had sought to make Jesus king after the feeding of the 5,000. The Lord then could not yield to her petition because to do so would have misled her and he sought to deliver both the mother and the daughter from demons. His silence and his rebukes were meant to wring out of her not the distancing title Son of David, but the title Lord. Thus, when she finally accepted that he was, all, he was to also be her master, that she was to eat from his hand and calls him Lord, then at last he relents grants her petition, and praises her faith. Now, I think that that explanation is a little bit of an over-explanation. And I'm not at all sure that the title Son of David was distancing at all, or even that it was particularly Jewish. At the very least, I don't see how Son of David is really any more Jewish than the title of, of Messiah or say, the Kyrie, Lord have mercy. When she called him the son of David, she asked for mercy to rid her daughter of demons. That leads me to think she had a pretty good inkling as to what the Messiah, the son of David, was all about. And even if her faith was mingled with heresy and confusion, it was nonetheless faith. And that is certainly the point. The Lord is drawing her faith out, raising it to its potential. From our perspective, without the end in sight, it seems as though God is mean to us. He doesn't give us what we want. He lets us suffer. He lets our loved ones die. But the Lord is not mean. Rather, He is teaching us to live by faith to confess. And death is the portal by which he delivers us. It's been said that there are five virtues in the Canaanite woman which we do well to emulate. Humility, patience, prayer, perseverance, and faith. Now these virtues are interdependent. She is patient in that she endures the seeming reproaches of the Lord. She accepts the crosses that he sends. She doesn't quit when she is not first successful. At the same time, even though she accepts the silence and insult of the Lord, she does not cease in asking for what she knows is good until she obtains it. She perseveres patiently in her prayers that her daughter be relieved of demons. This patience and persistence are both related to her humility. She is willing to be a dog, to eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table, and is not too proud to beg. And all of this is because she believes that the master, the son of David, is good and will be good to her. If she was not humble, she would not be patient. If she was not patient, she would not persevere. 
And if she did not have faith, if she did not trust in both the love and the power of Christ, there would be no reason to pray. That then is the ultimate virtue here and is the reason that the Lord does praise her humility, patience, perseverance, or prayer. He praises her faith. Faith, that trust and expectation that God is good and will do good things for her according to his promise. That is the virtue from which all of the other virtues arise. <laughs> so it's been said that if we had had these five qualities, we should be delivered from every devil. That is, from all sin. <clears throat> if we had faith, we would have all that comes with it. But most significantly, we would have the benefit of Christ's sacrifice. That includes the benefit of his death and his resurrection for us. And we do have faith. By the grace of God, we believe. What do we believe? We believe that Jesus is the son of David, come for mercy's sake to be our redeemer and to make us his children. How patient, persistent, and humble are we? That's hard to say. These things are not as obvious as we think they are and are often hindered by our sins. But by God's grace, we have faith. And faith delivers Christ and the Holy Spirit, and it causes good works, even patience and humility, to rise up within us. Thus does he deliver us from every devil. Is our faith as perfect or great as the Canaanite woman's or the centurion's? I don't know. Probably not, but maybe it is. Only God can measure faith. Our task is not to figure out if we have enough faith. Our task is to repent and fall down in worship and pray for mercy and to beg for crumbs. And if it seems that he is ignoring us, or even rebuffing us, and it often does. We persevere, not because we have faith, but because he is good, because he made a promise. A bruised reed he will not break, a smoldering wick he will not quench. We hold him to his word, and if he afflicts us with evil, with tyrannical government, or cancer, or demons, we endure in prayer. We do not cease to ask for relief and for justice. We accept the crosses that he bestows, but we don't stop praying that they be removed. And they will be, eventually. We are beggars, so we keep on begging, imploring the Lord for his mercy. We ask him, finally, to be himself, to be our Messiah, to be our son of David, who has come to free us from the devil, from the world, and from our sinful flesh. All of this is in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds forever in Christ Jesus. We continue now on page 192 with singing together our offertory, Creating Me. Please rise.
Shepherd of Israel, our Lord and Master, remember your tender mercies and your loving kindness of old. Do not let our enemies triumph over us, and do not depart from us until you have blessed us. As you strove for Jacob, so strive now for your faithful people who put their trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd of Israel, you disdain nothing that you have made, creating us new and contrite hearts, that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we would, we would receive your absolution with true penitence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd of Israel, preserve all pastors in Christ, especially Matthew, our city president, Kevin, our district president, and Mark, our circuit visitor. Renew in this congregation and among all your saints faith to cling to you in adversity, boldness to oppose the devil and resist the flesh, and compassion to serve one another in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd of Israel, preserve all those learning the faith, all teachers, children, and their parents, and every Christian home from the assaults of the evil one. As you have called us in holiness, so sanctify us to walk as we ought, and to please you through the Lord Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd of Israel, give steadfastness and wisdom to our leaders, especially Joseph, our president, Michael, our governor, Christina, our mayor, and all congressmen, judges, and civil servants. Especially we pray for our local law enforcement, and Clay, Gary, Nathaniel, Cody, and Megan in our sheriff's office. Grant peace between nations and a spirit of humility and concord to our citizens. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd of Israel, as we have no strength to save ourselves from sickness and death, defend us and those we love from every adversity of body and soul. Especially we pray for Patricia and her ongoing needs, for Barbara, Tony, Mara, Karen, Nancy, and their afflictions, and for all those we remember now in our hearts. Remember not our former iniquities, but let your tender mercies come speedily. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd of Israel, we offer thanksgiving for the blessings you give to us, rejoicing in all your gifts of life, especially Kathy and all those celebrating birthdays, as well as David and Marcia, Brian and Jan, and all those celebrating anniversaries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we implore you that by your Holy Spirit, we implore you by your Holy Spirit to strengthen our hearts and confirm our faith and hope in your grace and mercy, so that although we have reason to fear because of our conscience, our sin, and our unworthiness, we may nevertheless, with the woman of Canaan, hold fast to your grace, and in every trial and temptation find you a present help and refuge through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.